Hi everyone, welcome to unit 4 of the module on water accounting using Vapor. In this unit we will talk about rainfall and incremental components of evapotranspiration. We will describe what these components mean. We will see the need to split evapotranspiration into its components and what it means for water accounting. Also, we will touch upon on the methods used to split evapotranspiration. The unit consists of this short video, an exercise to reclassify vapor land cover categories to water accounting plus land use categories, and compute precipitation, rainfall, and incremental evapotranspiration volumes for this land use categories. There will also be a quiz to test your understanding of the subject. After following this unit, you will be able to describe what rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration mean, describe the need for splitting evapotranspiration into rainfall and incremental components, describe available methods to split evapotranspiration and compute the rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration per water accounting plus land use categories. When precipitation is land, it takes either green or blue water pathways. The water that is stored in the unsaturated soil layer forms the green water resources and the water that is stored in the rivers, streams, surface water bodies and ground waters form the blue water resources. Green water refers to the water in the root zone that is available for uptake by plant roots. The principal flow of green water is by evapotranspiration through which it is transferred from the root zone through a vegetation canopy into the atmosphere. Whereas blue water is the water which is involved in the runoff cycle consisting of surface water and ground water. Professor Molden estimated green and blue components of the global water use as depicted in this figure. It shows that most of the green water component is consumed by the landscape, like forests, grazing lands, natural vegetation, and so on. Crops and livestock consume only 4.5% of the global water use, while irrigated agriculture consumed about 1.4%. A small proportion of the blue water is consumed by urban areas and industries. The green and blue water differ in terms of possibilities for storage and use. Industrial, municipal and livestock water supply primarily depend on the blue water, while crop cultivation relies on both green and blue water. Why differentiate between green and blue water? We saw that the two sources of water differ in terms of possibilities for storage and use. Rainwater is stored in the soil and is primarily used in situ for biomass production. Groundwater and surface water are stored in natural aquifers, lakes and rivers, but can also be abstracted or diverted, transported and stored in artificial reservoirs and can be used for a variety of purposes, from irrigating crops or trees to water supply for households, municipal purposes and industries. We need to distinguish between green and blue water for assessing irrigation efficiency. The irrigation efficiency at field level is defined as the fraction of the applied irrigation water volume that benefits the plant. The volume of irrigation water that benefits the plant is blue transpiration. 
Total water consumption in crop production is defined as the evapotranspiration over the growing period. That means from planting to harvesting. In irrigated crop production, the source of soil moisture and evapotranspiration is partly rainwater, partly irrigation water, and partly capillary rice. For assessing irrigation efficiency, we really need to know the blue evapotranspiration. That is the part of the evapotranspiration that stems from irrigation. Another reason for our interest in blue evapotranspiration is the impact of blue water use on groundwater tables, river flows, and remaining blue water availability in a basin. To evaluate how much water we consume per unit of crop production, we need to know the blue components of evapotranspiration. Also, we to analyze the trade-off between blue and green evapotranspiration, we need to know the blue and green components of evapotranspiration. Referring to water consumption through evapotranspiration, in water accounting, we refer to rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration. In the remaining slides, we use these terms to represent green and blue water. Rainfall evapotranspiration is the green part of the evapotranspiration, which refers to part of the evapotranspiration from the soil moisture in the unsaturated soil layer, stemming directly from rainfall. Incremental evapotranspiration is the blue part of the evapotranspiration which refers to part of the evapotranspiration, which is not directly from rainfall, but from irrigation supply or abstracted from surface and subsurface water. Or the difference between rainfall evapotranspiration and the actual evapotranspiration. Methods to split evapotranspiration into rainfall and incremental components. Standard approach for estimating blue and green water or splitting evapotranspiration into rainfall and incremental components can be broadly grouped into two categories, data-driven approach and model-based approach, such as hydrological or crop models. Data-driven methods are methods based on data analysis for an area relating observed precipitation and evapotranspiration data to determine rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration. Model-based approaches use hydrological or water balance model to estimate rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration. Some of the examples for data-driven approaches include Budico curves, and several methods such as developed by Senai et al. and Van Enk. Budico curves are used to estimate annual evapotranspiration in terms of annual precipitation and annual potential evapotranspiration. If the available energy is not sufficient, that means in energy-limited situations, such as in wet environment, annual evapotranspiration can approach potential evapotranspiration. Whereas if available energy is sufficient, such as in warmer and drier environment, annual evapotranspiration can approach annual precipitation. From Budico curves, we can see that any part of the actual evapotranspiration above the energy and water limit lines is blue evapotranspiration or incremental component of the evapotranspiration, whereas under these curves is the green evapotranspiration. One example of model-based split of rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration is 
using a soil moisture balance model. Such models estimate rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration by tracking soil moisture balance and determining if evapotranspiration is satisfied only from rainfall stored in the soil moisture or additional supplies required. This is all about rainfall and incremental evapotranspiration. I hope you will be able to do the exercise and to see you in the following videos. Bye.